I need to warn you ahead of time that this is extremely addictive, so uh, just be, be wary of that. So uh, I am uh, not officially affiliated with Parks on the Air. I uh, got this presentation from uh, K8VOX, who did it at Hamcation, and I've made some modifications to it. Uh, so uh, here we go. As an introduction, um, Parks on the Air is a 501c3 radio sport program. It's not a contest, and similar in the way that Field Day is not a contest. Um, if you know, get my drift on that. Um, it encourages communications and portable operations from uh, state and provincial parks for uh, Canada and nationally managed public lands. Uh, and there's a large set of references and a short set of rules. You can either be an activator where you go to the parks or you can be a chaser or hunter as they're sometimes called that uh, follows the people as they go to parks and you just kind of work them as they go around. Uh, POTA started as a small group of uh, U.S. people that uh, liked the uh, National Parks on the Air program, and it started shortly after that that they uh, built this program. It's uh, uh, coordinated by volunteers in each call area, so as you activate parks, there's a list of all the ten call areas where you can send your logs into your, uh, your local log coordinator. And uh, there's over 2,700 members now, and they're adding more people all the time. And they've had like probably 30 or 40 people a week join the, join the group. And how you can join, uh, the website is parksontheair.com. Um, you can sign in with uh, it's like Google, Facebook, or Amazon accounts, or you can just make an account on the uh, website itself using your email. Uh, if you get in trouble, there's an email info at parksontheair.com. So uh, you just choose where you want to go, and you go and set up, and I'll get into all that. You can find the parks on the, on the website. Here's a map of all the different parks. Uh, there's over 5,000 in the U.S. and almost 5,000 in Canada. Uh, we got Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico are covered as well. There's quite a few in Florida. I believe there's 288 uh, entries in Florida. So here's some of the local ones. Um, the easiest to drive to is probably the Skyway Fishing Pier State Park. That was the first one I did, and you can just park on the on the bridge and set up uh, right there. I've got a picture of it. I'll show you later. Um, you do get a lot of looky loos there, so if that's not your thing, the uh, next best one's probably uh, Terracea State Preserve, which is just past the Skyway. Get off at Bradenton and kind of cross directly across the exit and then kind of loop around under the highway, and it's that like marshy swamp area over there. Not very pretty, but uh, you can park there and activate right by the entrance, or if you walk further down, there's a uh, nice uh, view of the swamp if you want to activate from there. A uh, much prettier place to activate is Honeymoon Island State Park in Dunedin. Um, that's uh, been activated quite a few times. There's a guy uh, up in Spring Hill, Terry Sidelinker. He's probably gone there 30 times, so you may want to check the Facebook if he's gone there that day before you do that one. But uh, you can set up right on the beach there. It's real pretty. And uh, another close one is uh, the Madeira Brickle Mound site, which is also on the other side of the Skyway in Bradenton, and it's just a small park with an uh, Indian mound there, and uh, it's easy to get to. Uh, more difficult ones are there's two islands, Caledizi Island State Park. Uh, you can walk there from Clearwater, I did it. It's about three miles, I don't recommend it with all the gear. Or you can take a ferry from Honeymoon Island Park to get there. And then there's Egmont Key State Park, which we did for the uh, Florida Parks on the Air event that I'll talk about a little later. That ferry leaves from Fort DeSoto and it's uh, $25 for the round trip. You get about four hours out there, it's a really nice place to activate. Uh, there's a few parks that are short drive away, uh, Hillsboro, uh, Lake Manatee River is a nice one, that's over in the uh, Ruskin area. Uh, the Lake Manatee State Park, you can set up right on the lake there, and it's about an hour away. Uh, Mayaka River, I'm saving that one, I haven't activated that yet. They have a uh, primitive campground you can walk to, it's like a six mile hike, so I'm going to do that at some point. Uh, the Oscar Scherer State Park is a little bit past Sarasota and uh, Alpia River, which is uh, a little east of Ruskin. Uh, they have uh, good mountain bike trails there if you're into that. 
Uh, what do you need to activate? Uh, you need a amateur radio license, of course, and then radio and a portable antenna. You need something to power it. You need to, something to get your logs into ADIT format to, to uh, have them submitted, and then a desire to have fun. Uh, popular antennas are uh, homebrew wire on a self-supporting mass. That's what I use. Uh, the next popular is the Wolf River coil. I got a picture of one of those. and. Uh, bunch of other antennas that are portable. So here's basically the rules here. So you need to make 10, 10 QSOs on one UTC day. So if you're activating at uh, you know, 7 or 8 p.m., you want to make sure that you get, uh, you know, get your QSOs in before or after that. I did one where I had half and half, and that doesn't count. Um, you have to be completely within the park with all your equipment and gear, so you can't do a remote station or anything like that. It doesn't count. Um, the work bands count, so you can do that with, uh, I tried to do it during uh, WPX on 17. It, uh, it works, but it's not quite as, as easy as 20 is. Uh, any simplex mode, including satellite, but no repeaters. So uh, satellite counts, but uh, terrestrial repeaters do not. <coughs> Um, you can operate in any band. Uh, general band is uh, the general portion is recommended. I tried to activate my first one in the extra band, and then I got accosted on Facebook for doing that. So it's, uh, sometimes uh, people get a little bit inuit about it. So. <laughs> uh, there's no specific exchange. Typically, people give you uh, signal reports, and it's real signal reports on this versus five nine for everything which is good when you're portable, so you can kind of tell where you're doing well. And people usually give you your state, and uh, just so you can kind of tell where you're getting to. But for the rules, you just really need the call sign, the time, and the band. Um, the, you don't really need to announce you're in a park, but it's, uh, it's, you know, it's more welcome for people that have logged it in their logs which park you're at. Uh, so yeah, date, time, the band, and the other person's call sign is really all that's required. I typically put in the uh, signal reports in the call uh, or the park designator as well. And you put that in the file name, like it shows you there below with the date and the park designator when you email it, just to make it easier on the guy that has to put it in. So calling CQ, uh, I just pick, typically do CQ parks on the air. This is Alpha Alpha Zero Oscar calling CQ parks on the air until somebody comes back to me. Um, so you know, I'll give the designator every once in a while on what park I'm at. Uh, for CW, there's a guy in 2CX who's activated like I think 70,000 QSOs worth of parks on the air, and he does uh, a lot of CW. You can put in uh, CQ POTA and your call sign twice, and then the park designator and the uh, the uh, reverse beacon network will pick it up and spot you on the uh, POTA spotting website automatically. There's a picture up there of what the uh, adding a spot looks like, and I'll show you some uh, pictures of the spotting website in a few slides. Here's what, how I log. I just write down the uh, part number on top and then the uh, frequency I'm using, and then I write down the first time, and then I start writing calls. And they come in real fast, so I just uh, kind of uh, write the time in as I get a chance to look at it, and then just keep going. And I use this program, Fast Log Entry, to uh, uh, enter the times. And you can put in the start time and then the, uh, the end time, and it'll automatically add all the intermediate times for you. So it makes it pretty easy. It'll also add uh, comments and stuff, and it makes the ADIF file for you. So if you're going to do a paper log, I recommend this program for log submission. You can also bring your computer. A lot of people do that and just set up on a laptop and type them in as they come. Uh, why would you enjoy it? The first reason is uh, the lower noise floor. That's why I got into it to begin with. I was having a lot of problems with noise at my house, and uh, I wanted to get out there and see how it was without all the power lines and neighbors right on top of me, all that. And uh, it really is much lower noise. I got on the, when I got on the Skyway that first time, I could hear two guys calling CQ on the same same frequency, and neither of them could hear each other. And I'm like, wow, this is the first time I've had that happen. So it's so. Definitely much clearer signals out there. And gives you great views as well while you're doing it. Um, I was out a couple weeks ago, and there was a big radio tower, probably a 1,000-foot tower, 
probably a mile away, and uh, I could see a guy climbing it, so I got to watch him climb the tower while I was working on my little 40 foot pole. It was interesting. Uh, every activation has uh, different problems and issues, space constraints, weather, etc. Uh, it's an opportunity to opportunity to perfect your uh, your your radio operating. Um, makes you a better operator, and you can make friends all over the world. But the biggest reason is you become the DX, and it's really awesome when the, the pileup gets you, and you're just going and going. And uh, when I was out at the island, I got 121 contacts in an hour and 10 minutes, and it was uh, it's pretty wild. It's a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes you get there, and it'll be you know you'll struggle to get the 10 in an hour, but uh, other times you call CQ once and you never call it again. It just keeps going, just one right after another, and it's really fun. Uh, other reasons, uh, it's POTUS accessible, so you can just drive somewhere and you can park. You could operate it from your car, a lot of people do that. Some people have uh, mounts on the back of their uh, trailer hitch and they stick the antenna right on there. Um, you can do a rapid deployment style where you can set up in one park, move to the next park. They have some rules on that based on how you're moving. They call it uh, radar, uh, rapid deployment, amateur radio, something like that. And, uh, if you're walking, you can you have to go so far. If you're driving, I think it's uh, six kilometers. You have to move to, for it to count as a uh, different location. Uh, you can put in logs for many times. So if you did an NPOTA or if you worked in a park 10 years ago and you still have the logs and it's got a park designator, you can submit it and it'll be accepted. Uh, the website's under uh, continuous development and all modes are welcome so I tried a little FT8 I got a uh, put a hamstick on my car just to see if I could do it from the car and uh, it does work it's uh, FT8 is not quite as fun as uh, getting a pilot going though you can get awards for uh, activating I brought a couple of them here look like this they uh, once you've registered and you get uh, you get enough contacts uh, this one's for uh, this is a Hunter Award for working 50 different units. Uh, they'll email that to you automatically and they put them up on the Facebook too so that uh, everybody can see. They're getting pretty long on the list now. They get you know, 100 people getting awards each, uh, each time they put them out. They also have Park to Park Awards where uh, if you're at a park and someone else is at a park and you make a contact together, that's a Park to Park contact. And that's kind of exciting that uh, you know, someone else is doing the same thing you're doing and uh, you know you talk to them. I've gotten quite a so I called him, hey park to park, and another guy called him at the same time, so we did a three-way park to park, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Here's uh, some of the more fancy awards. You can get an award for working every park in the state. Uh, be kind of difficult for Florida. I think a guy got Missouri, there's like 60 parks there. I think he's the first one to get it. Um, you can get awards for working from the same park, uh, working multiple parks in a day. Uh, there's quite a few different awards around the website. And how does it work for hunters? So you can create an account on parksontheair.com and then they'll email you the awards. That's just so they have your email. You don't have to do that, but you won't get the awards. Uh, you make a QSO and you can Put on a fresh spot on the POTA website if you want. You don't have to do that either, but it'll help the guy that's out there. Um, you don't need to submit logs, only the activators submit logs. And uh, once you've got an account, you can click on My Stats in the dashboard and it gives you kind of a list like this of which parts you activated and uh, which call sign it was and the date and the state and all that. Uh, tips for hunting, uh, they just, people schedule them so you can go on the uh, POTA spotting website which is POTA.us and there will be a list of uh, who has, uh, has, who's got scheduled activations and who's currently spotted. Um, there's a, uh, a Slack channel for a chat room that gives you uh, instant access to the uh, people if you wanted to actually have a conversation with someone about it. There's, uh, you know, use fanatics, that's pretty standard in the DX code of conduct. And uh, you can spot on a cluster as well if you just put in a POTA and then the K designator after it, and then the uh, POTA spotter will pick it up automatically. Here's what the spot form looks like. It's kind of small there, but it's basically just a call sign, where they are, and uh, the frequency and mode. So uh, 
you know, people will sit there and watch it all day. When I traveled around a couple of weeks ago in northern Florida, I went to 11 parks, and one guy got me on every single one. So he's definitely just sitting there watching this all day long, waiting for it to come up. And there's probably three or four of them that are you know, always waiting, so you're almost guaranteed to get those three or four guys as soon as you uh, put your spot up there. So I try to you know, say, hey, is the frequency in use? And then while I'm doing that, I'm loading up the uh, page to spot myself, and which is allowed in this. So then once I'm spotted, then I usually get contacts pretty quick. And then either it stays going like that, typically on the weekends or in the evenings is the best time. Um, and you'll get a lot of contacts. Mostly uh, 40 and 20 is, uh, is, I start at 20 and then I'll move to 40 if it gets later. And there's some guys locally, or not really locally, but guys that are closer that want me to run 40 during the day. There's one guy, hey, can you get on 40 every time? Cause a lot of, of action much, you get them occasionally, but uh, this uh, southeast is very popular for Poda. Um, why would you enjoy it? Is uh, you're helping out another person while they're out there, and it's super easy. So you just call them and you know give your signal report, tell them your state, and uh, that's pretty much it for the for the contact. And it helps him get his ten contacts, him or her, him or her, I should say. You don't have to submit any logs. It keeps your friend your your skills sharp, and you can make friends and. Uh, it's, uh, it helps the people that are out there. So if you do hear someone calling CQ Parks on the air, it's, uh, definitely respond to them. Uh, Hunter Awards, very similar, and uh, I've got a couple up here, like I said. Um, you can work uh, every park in the state, and you'll get a, a nice uh, award like that in your email. Uh, the top activator challenges are uh, Terrestrial and solar weather are probably the biggest ones right now. So, especially in Florida, you need to make sure that uh, it's uh, not going to storm while you're out there. I've had it a couple times where you can see the clouds rolling in, and I'll just shut it down because you don't want to be out there in the middle of the field with a wire sticking up 40 feet in the air. Uh, solar weather, of course, we all know about that. Um, gear failure. So, I I typically bring a backpack full of all this stuff here, which I'll go over in a minute. Um, I also, in my car, I'll keep like a kit with uh, extra wire and uh, wire cutters and just basically a tool bag of all the different stuff you might need, new connectors and things like that. Uh, so local QRM can be an issue. Even when you're in the middle of nowhere, there might be a power line like right on the other side of the trees or something. I've tried to work uh, the uh, Big Cypress National Res Preserve uh, on the Alligator Alley on the way to Miami. and. Uh, Tons of noise there for some reason. I've heard other people complain about it too. I've uh, tried to activate it twice now, and the second time I walked way back into the uh, into the trail, you could still hear it. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I haven't fully activated that one yet, so it's on my list to, to get to it because it's uh, it's holding me back. Uh, difficult staff. I've uh, haven't had this problem really. I've probably I think I've been four times. I've been uh, asked, well, "Hey, what are you doing?" And just Ham radio, um, typically they're, uh, oh, cool. And, uh, one time I was sort of near the road and there uh, was a state trooper who said, don't run the wire across the road. So I wasn't going to, but uh, I didn't. So it's uh, not a big deal. And uh, unable to self-spot is another issue where, like I said, it helps a lot if you can spot yourself. Um, if you uh, if you can't, you can ask for a spot. It's, it's, that's not illegal. So uh, um, if you do get a contact, hey, can you spot me? And uh, then you'll should get a nice pickup in contacts after that. Uh, some tips uh, is safety first and uh, mark your uh, your wires with uh, with uh, safety stuff so you don't get a tripping hazard. I got green flags on here. Um, you know, monitor weather. Keep uh, keep the data at your fingertips. Uh, like I. Was going out once. I'm like, hey, I better get the designator for that park. And I went back in. I was going to go to Fort Soto, and uh, I uh, checked, and that's a county park, so it didn't count. So you want to make sure you get your the K number before you go out there, so you can give that to people. Also, I've had people ask for the county and the grid square, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um, so it's nice to have. You don't have to, but it's uh, some people are interested in that. Uh, you know, uh, be clear on the rules of the parks. Uh, there's not too many of parks that I've seen the rules that I haven't been to some of the more sensitive areas where you're supposed to ask for that, where it's mostly national parks. And uh, there's one, uh, DeSoto National Monument, where you need to get permission. That's uh, down in Bradenton as well. 
and uh, be persistent and be flexible. There's uh, little things come up all the time in this. I think that's part of the fun, though. So my equipment, I use a FT891. It's 100 watts. It does not have a tuner, so I use resonant antennas. I've got it in a Harbor Freight box. Uh, my design is mostly uh, budget, so it's, uh, it's uh, cheapest things you can get while still having a quality system. So I picked up uh, the uh, LiPo 4 battery at uh, Hamcation this year. Before that, I was using AGM batteries. A battery is uh, basically it's four times the price for half the weight, so uh, you have to decide if that's worth it. Um, for the uh, AGM, I, uh, an option if you're traveling and you don't want to take the battery, I picked up that seven amp hour AGM for 20 bucks when I was traveling and wasn't quite sure if it would make it back, so it's as a you know $20 throwaway. I put it in its own bin coming through the uh, security at the airport. They swabbed it and stuff, and they definitely pulled it aside. And they let me through with it, so I still have it. Um, I use a spider beam 12 meter telescoping mast. Just like this. So that goes up 40 feet. Uh, this kind of pulls out, and there's a little hook on the end of it where you tie the antenna to. <clears throat> got some pictures of it up there to see. Uh, for the antennas, I use a uh, 20 meter speaker wire dipole and a 40 meter uh, vertical with two elevated radials. Uh, here's a 20 meter dipole with a uh, plastic piece for the middle. And then a, uh, a 40 is just soldered directly to the SO239 connectors. Amazon speaker wire, 10 bucks for 100 feet. And you actually get 200 feet if you're making antennas. <laughs> and then I use uh, RJ8X co coax. Uh, I tried to use the RG316, the skinnier uh, for the lighter weight, but it's just not easy to roll back up for 50 feet of that when you're outside. So I can't really recommend it, even though it's slightly lighter. Uh, depending on location, I also have uh, solar panels, solar controller, and a uh, a meter that gives me the power, and I put power poles on everything, so it's really easy to connect it all together. Uh, bring me laptop headphones and a folding table, similar to this one, but it folds in half. Um, and I have somewhere to set up. So here's some pictures. This is uh, Tom, W-8-T-A-M, uh, operating from a picnic table. He is one of the guys that made the website. So him and his wife, uh, K8VOX Julie, she uh, did the con uh, this presentation at uh, Hamcation. And they're gonna be at Dayton as well on Friday morning if you're there. They're, uh, I believe they're at 9 a.m. on Friday. In Dayton doing the same presentation. I'm sure they'll have some updates to it. So here's uh, me activating at a beach. I used the chair as a table. In this case, uh, I could carry it out to uh, the beach. This is. Uh, St. Mark's Lighthouse uh, in the St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge. This is up on the beginning part of the Panhandle. It's a very pretty spot, and uh, this was a fun activation on the beach here. You can bring your own table. This is probably my favorite activation. This, I drove up to New York, and I brought the radio stuff with me. And uh, it's uh, Tioga State Forest in Pennsylvania. They call it the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania. About a 45 minute drive down a dirt road to get to this spot with this great overview here. I actually camped out right next to it and uh, had breakfast on that table in the next morning. Uh, you can camp while you, while you uh, activate, so uh, you can't quite see it, but the antenna is behind the car there. And uh, this is the Apalachicola National Forest. Uh, this was a fun spot to get to. It's about six miles down that dirt road. Activate from your car. Uh, this is uh, Brian K0ATZ. I think he's the guy that activated all the ones in Missouri. And uh, he's got a nice antenna there on his truck. I'm not quite sure what kind that is, but uh, he hasn't been as active as he used to be, but uh, he was out there all the time for a while. You can set up your whole antenna farm, which uh, this guy, uh, Kent, does. It's pretty cool. He's, uh, he lives out of that, uh, that uh, RV there. And he'll go around, and he's mostly in Arizona and the desert and stuff, and he'll set up all these antennas while he, while he camps out there. And uh, it's a pretty slick setup, um, all sorts of dipoles, and he's got a vertical sometimes, and he can just kind of play around with antennas, and then he packs up and moves on. 
Here's my first one. Uh, this is before I had a spider beam. This is the uh, Skyway Bridge here. So this is that 20 meter dipole connected between uh, three uh, 10 foot PVC pipes. Then you get a little extra altitude there on the bridge, I think, with uh, being over the water, and it worked really well. People definitely gave me some weird looks though, like what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> So, although there are some kind of parts don't count, and one of this is one of my favorite pictures is here is uh, at Fort DeSoto. Um, it's a fun place to set up there. It's uh, right, on, right on the water. Uh, Norm came out and hung out with me for a bit there while, while he was staying there during the winter. I right, can activate as a group. Here's our group activation at uh, uh, Egmont Key. So we took the ferry out there and uh, uh, Amanda came. Uh, Whiskey Four, Mike, Mike Yankee, and uh, Corey N1 COR got the special event to call for us. Whiskey Four Echo. Uh, we had a bad band conditions there. I think we got about 100 contacts. We had run in two stations. Uh, but, uh, get four hours out there on the ferry, so that was enough. It gets pretty hot out there. But right underneath this old uh, Fort Battery is a picnic table inside a uh, little room, so it's shaded. And it's a really good spot to activate. It if you want to take the ferry out there and carry all your stuff. It's not too far of a walk, but uh, probably uh, two or 300 yards to get to that location. Or you can park your boat over there if you have a boat and uh, just walk right over. So I've got the pole uh, bungee corded to a, uh, a metal pole there, which is one of the ways I do it. And then uh, there and just kind of tighten it up and it works really well. I didn't think it would, but it, uh, it holds that pole up there. And the dipole kind of bends the pole quite a bit, as you can see there, but I haven't had an issue with that yet. Um, here's a more expensive way to do it, is the Wolf River coil. I think it's around $250, but uh, that uh, I'm probably going to get one eventually because I think it deploys significantly faster. This guy does, uh, this guy is the guy that's going for all the parks in Florida. I think he's got 90 of them so far, just in slide. And, uh, this one does have radials on it, which you can't see in the pictures, but uh, from what I can tell, you kind of move it up and down the coil, and uh, that's how you get it tuned properly. But uh, you just flop that tripod out, and uh, you're ready to go. It's got a, like a metal extension on it. So uh, the Facebook group is uh, facebook.com slash parks on the air. Uh, that's probably the best uh, way to get information about it. There's lots of people on there and everybody posts pictures and they're, uh, when they're activating and I'll post on there if I need a few more contacts. Say I need a few more contacts and people that may not have seen it will, uh, will see it and get on there. There's also a Slack channel which is a real-time chat so it's got people on there and I think the spotting network is, is uh, listed on there too. So it'll automatically post the spots to it. There's some other groups, uh, Worldwide Flora and Fauna is one of the uh, uh, predates Parks on the Air. It's got a similar numbering system, but you need 44 contacts to activate that one. Uh, the Florida Parks on the Air is an event the first weekend in April that uh, runs sort of as a CUSO party, but based on parks. So you give your, each park in Florida has a designator, and you give that designator three letters versus your county designator. We had 27 people, or 27 logs last year, and this year I think we had 37 logs, so more and more people are doing it. And uh, there's also uh, West Central Florida County Parks on the air. I just happened to stumble across this. I'm not quite sure how popular that's gonna be. It's uh, there's 40 people in the Facebook group, and that's uh, county parks within our, uh, our district. You have to mail in your logs for that, so I'm not quite sure how, how well it'll pick up. And then there's uh, Beaches on the Air, which is another program similar to the to, uh, Parks on the Air. Um, that's international, so there's some really good photos on there of different people activating in a beach. It's not too popular yet, there's probably uh, 100 people on there, but it's uh, the, the pictures are really, really good. And uh, here's the links, and I'll give this uh, presentation to Ed so we can put it on the website. To, my uh, website's down there at the bottom. If you want to check that out, I put pictures of all my activations up there. Any questions? How are you uh, connecting? Okay. Yeah, you were saying you get all your information because sometimes, you know, when you're, if you were out someplace like Fort DeSoto, not only, you know, are you a, you know, a county park on the air, but you're all, 
you know, it could also be a beach, and you could also be an island. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so you get those numbers before and then. That was easy, you know, same way. Yeah. So how are you connecting the, are connecting to the internet for your end phone? Uh, typically, if I can, sometimes you can't, and I don't, and I just go for it. And uh, it's uh, on a weekend. Um, that's when you work the contest be before you go out there, because <laughs> then you're like, oh man, did I work that guy at home or not? And uh, you want to get dupes. Um, and it's uh, it can be tricky to do a contest weekend if you're not in the contest. It's hard to find a spot. But uh, on a non-contest weekend, you'll do really, really well. Or any other questions for uh, Pat? Well, thank you so much, Pat. I'm sure you'll have to step up here to take a quick look at it.